Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Antoine Thomas back again with another episode of Silver Lining TV, where we motivate and inspire people to create a better life through real estate. And this one's going to be a short one, straight to the point, because I want to share with you guys some key terms that uh, you'll find, common terms that you'll find in the home buying process. So it's very important, obviously, if you are going to be a part of a transaction as big as selling or buying a home, uh, especially buying, because generally if you're selling a home, you've already bought the home. So you have a little experience there. But if you're a first time home buyer, or if you just generally don't have this type of knowledge, this is what this video is for. We want to get you guys up to speed on the terms. So then when you are communicating with a real estate agent or a lender, you understand what they're talking about. So pay attention. And I do, I will say, I do have this graphic I, I think you guys can all see the graphic. I do have a copy of this. If you guys want a copy email to you, reach out to me. I'll give you my contact information at the end of the video. All right, let's hop into it. So as you can see right here, I'm going to zoom in for everyone. Let's see, there we go. So key terms to know in the home buying process. And you'll see right here, is a list of some of the common terms in the home buying process. So we'll start with appraisal. An appraisal is a pro professional analysis that is used to determine the value of a home. And what I find is a lot of people get appraisal and inspection confused. So the appraisal is going to determine what the home is worth. The inspection is going to identify the condition of the home and I, I and pretty much just kind of let you know the integrity of the home. If there's issues with it, so on and so forth, but the, the value side, which is going to be the, the appraisal, that is what that is for. So it is a necessary step in validating a home's worth to you and your lender as you secure financing. So if you're using a lender and especially a government backed loan or really any type of loan, most of them are going to require you get an appraisal on a property. Okay. And it, it's for, to protect you as the person buying the property and then also to protect the bank. Okay. The second thing as you can see, uh, that you see right here is closing costs. Now the fees, now closing costs are very vague. So we got to broke it down here. These are fees that are required to complete, complete the real estate transaction. They're paid at closing. They include points, taxes, title insurance, any type of financing costs and items that must be prepared or escrowed. So your lender, if you're, if you're using a lender, ask them for a, a pretty much an item sheet of all your closing costs. And they typically do. And, and, and so when you get it and if you have questions about it, because a lot of the documents that lenders have and share with you, they can be a little confusing. Make sure you ask the lender to have them break it down for you, but your closing costs should be explained on the documents that the lender shares with you, as, as well as your agent once you get into the point of writing offers and, and you're in the home buying, the actual in the home buying process. Then we got credit score. Most of us, we do know what a credit score is, but I've had questions in the past where they weren't too familiar with credit score. I guess the 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 normal question I get is, well, what, how can I find my credit score or what is my credit score? And there are some great tools out there you can use. You got Credit Karma and some other tools, but I do recommend actually paying to get your credit score. There are some programs where you may go to Equifax or TransUnion, one of the, the credit companies, and they may offer to give you a credit, your credit scenario, or I'm sorry, your credit report for no charge. But it's worth to at least once a year, check and see what your credit score is. Now, when you're buying a home, the lender is going to do that on your behalf. They're going to need to know what your credit score is because they want to make sure that you can repay the loan. Okay. So a credit score is going to range between 300 to 850. And most people, I've never met any anyone lower, like as low as 300. Most people fall in the 600s. Okay. If you're in the 600s, it's always great to get it up higher. And if you're in the 700s, you're doing great. And if you're in the 800s, you're doing outstanding. You should teach a class. So kudos to you if you're in the 700s and 800s. And if you're in the 600s, it's still okay. But the reason why you want to continue to increase your credit score is 
is the next term I'm going to share with you. And that is the, or not the next one, the, the one after that. So we'll talk about down payment real quick. So down payments are typically three to 20% of the purchase price. Many different loan programs that you could use some range at three to three and a half percent FHA conventional. You, they could go all the way up to 20%. Generally those are for investors, but if you're buying a home, you're going to live in it. You typically will get a lower down payment percentage. Let's see. Let's see. And if you, there are, as it says right here, there are some 0% loan programs available. You just need to ask your lender about that. I will say the 0% down payment programs are more specialty programs. So they don't really, uh, they really don't apply to every single home. Again, talk to your lender. They'll break it all down for you. Now back to the credit score. The reason why the credit sco score is so important because of your mortgage rate. Your interest rate that you pay to borrow money when buying a home, the lower the rate, the better, obviously. You always want to, most people enjoy getting a discount, whether it's buying shoes, whether it's buying a new car, the same thing when buying a new house, people want a discount. And a good way to get a discount in today's market is securing a low interest rate because think of it as them being on sale. Interest rates typically are around like four and a half to five percent. But over the past 12 months, maybe even longer than that, we've been seeing them below four percent. I consider that a discount on interest rates, uh, your interest rates being on sale. The higher your credit score is. It has a high impact. It's a, it's a big impact on whether you secure a low or high rate. If you have a higher credit score, you get a lower rate. If you have a lower credit score, you get a higher rate. Very important. So when you're in the 600s, if you can get it up as close to 700 or above as possible, it's going to save you a ton of money. All right. Again, it's very, there's so many variables that go into it. So it's very important that you speak with a lender if you have any questions so you can get all that ironed out and they'll be able to pretty much tailor to whatever your situation is. They'll tailor an action plan for you to, to help you save the most money. Pre-approval letter. So whenever you hear somebody say you need a pre-approval letter, that is what they're talking about. It is a letter from the lender that indicates that you can actually purchase the home. You get qualified or pre-approved for a certain dollar amount. That lets you know what you qualify for and how much you can spend. In today's market, it's very important that you have your pre-approval letter on hand at all times. Okay, But when they say pre-approval letter, that's what they mean. The pre-approval letter is an actual physical form letter, and they also give you email form. Okay, It is critical. And they're a real estate professional or a real estate advisor, an individual who services and buying and selling homes. Very simple. That's the one I, I think most people would be familiar with, but it's important to know any type of real estate professional, they're not all equal. And by the way, real estate professional is very vague. There are commercial real estate professionals. There are residential real estate professionals. There are people who are real estate professionals that are more in wholesaling more in investing. So they got different types of real estate professionals. If you're looking to buy or sell a home and you're not an investor, you most likely will want to hire or interview a real estate professional. So just to clarify that. So the best way to ensure that your home buying process is a confident one is going to be find a real estate pro who will guide you through every aspect of the transaction, like it reads right there. It is very important that the agent or real estate professional you are working with is taking their time to explain things to you thoroughly. Up front, first meeting, first conversation, we do consultations for, for a specific reason. We want to make sure that you are the most informed buyer in the market. And the more informed you are, the more comfortable you are, the more educated you are, the better decisions you make and the less hesitation that you have. And in today's market, we find that if you are hesitant or less educated, you miss out on homes left and right. 
because the inventory is so low. So you got to be you got to have everything in order when you get into the market, because if you don't, even if you miss a step, you can end up missing out on a great opportunity. So I wanted to make this video to educate my community, educate you guys across the, the nation. If you don't have this information, I hope this was valuable to you. Again, if you want a infographic or a, a printout of this, or I can email it to you. You can swing by the office. Again, we're just here to provide value and information. All right. So I'm going to wrap it up. Like I always say, our goal is to help you reach yours. Again, if there's anything you need, don't hesitate to reach out to me or your silver lining agent. And we will be so blessed to assist you. You guys take care and I'll see you on the next one.